Now we're ready to set up our project for in-app purchasing. I've created a simple project, a one-screen project, that we're going to be using for the next few lessons. Most of our work at this point, however, is setting up the in-app purchasing up on the App Store in the Developer Center. When I created our project, we were given a bundle identifier, and we're going to need that to create our app up on the Developer Center. So our bundle identifier is com.infiniteskills.inapppurchase. That's all we need from the project at this point. When we go up into the Dev Center, we want to go into Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles in our iOS area. You obviously have to be logged in to get into this area. And we're going to want to create an identifier. So these are already my existing app IDs, but I'm going to need a new one for this project. So I click on the plus, and I need to give it a name. And then I also need to use that bundle identifier, carefully typed, because if it's wrong, none of this will work. And then you check off the services that you want. You can see that in-app purchasing is checked by default. Make sure that that's the case. And we continue, and it gives you a confirmation screen, and this identifier is going to be significant to us later. And that all looks fine, so we'll click Submit on that. So now we have a registered app ID. The next thing we need to do is to create a provisioning profile. So in the sidebar, I'm going to create a provisioning profile for development. And I'm going to add a new one for this particular app. And this is an iOS app development at this point, so I'll create a provisioning profile for that. Then it asks which app ID we want to create this profile for. It's chosen by default, but you want to make sure that you get the right app ID here. So we do indeed want that in-app purchasing ID. Continue. And it wants to know which certificates we want this profile for. I actually have two certificates because I have two different Mac machines that I do development on. And unfortunately, they're both named the same thing, so this adds to confusion. So personally, I always select all. Now, if you only have one development machine, you won't have this kind of confusion anyway. But you can indeed select all, and the provisioning profile file will work on both of the machines. And then the devices that you want to work with. And then a profile name. I tend to name the profiles the same as I do the apps, just to avoid confusion between the profile and the apps. And now I'm generating the provisioning profile. So now it's created that profile, and we can download it. It's available for download at any time, so if you do happen to go to a different machine, or get interrupted and don't download it, not to worry, you don't have to download it immediately. So we'll do that, and it downloads pretty quickly. And then we want to go back into Xcode. And in Xcode, we want to go into the Organizer. And that's under the Window menu. And we want to select under our phone the provisioning profiles. This, of course, assumes that your device is hooked up. And we drag our provisioning profile into this area, and it is added. So now we have a valid profile that we just created for this particular app. So we're done with the Organizer. Last thing we need to do at this point is to configure the code signing. So again, in the project, we go into the build settings to the code signing area. In the code signing area, we want to make sure that our identity for our iPhone developer is chosen. This isn't done by default. It's usually iOS developer or something like that. So now the project is fairly well set up for in-app purchasing.